Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is the Weekly Market Wrap-Up. I want to remind you all that you can email me at info at viralnetworknews.com. You can let me know what your thoughts are about the market. I look really forward to reading all of them, so don't forget to email me. Let's get right into U.S. equities. On Thursday, the U.S. stock market avoided a fourth consecutive down day. The S&P 500 led both the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq. The S&P is up 1.48% against the prior session. Now, Thursday's session opened slightly lower and the hits came early in the morning hours as volatility covered the Asian markets, especially in Japan, who appears to be having growing concern about the Federal Reserve tapering off on the QE program. However, the session closed higher upon speculation that the Fed will continue with QE, and in closing minutes, implied volatility in the Nikkei declined, suggesting that a turnaround in the Japanese markets may be in play. Now, within equities, there are a few things that we need to watch for. Yields are making big moves. Since the beginning of May this year, the 10-year U.S. Treasury notes have jumped 32%. If the Fed cannot bring yields under control, there could be significant volatility, which may cause the dollar-yen pair to continue its recent decline. Although today's price action in the S&P 500 was positive, it's about 2% below its all-time high, and the technical trend is slightly bearish. Depending on other fundamental drivers, a dip below the 1600 mark could imply a lengthy correction. Moving over to currencies, the US dollar index took another hit, closing down at 80.73, bringing the US dollar Japanese yen pair to 97.56. Technically, the momentum for the US dollar is bearish, and there is an outside possibility that it could challenge the 79 level. However, the index is nearing oversold status, suggesting that a reversal could come quickly into play. While the US dollar Japanese yen pair is the primary focus of market participants, it's really important to also consider the strong moves in the euro currency. The euro index closing up 133.75. It appears it's on the brink of driving past a key resistance line. So the next few sessions in the Forex market is especially critical and will likely have strong ramifications of what we can globally expect for this summer. So keep an eye on the Forex market. All right, let's move over to winners and losers. Gannett Co. Incorporated ticker symbol GCI was this week's winner. GCI shares have relatively been on a steady incline over the past two years, but popped up 34% in a single day. This jump correlates with breaking news that Gannett, the country's largest newspaper company, will acquire Bello, the goal being to expand its broadcast business. Now, a lot of recent statistics have shown that newspapers are going to be a thing of the past, as everything is moving online today. What do you guys think? Let me know. Close came in slightly under the intraday high, which suggests that investors were extremely bullish on the news, and it's safe to say that GCI's winning streak will continue. Our loser for the week is Echo Therapeutics, or ticker symbol ECTE. Today's move marked the fifth consecutive day that ECTE lost share valuation, giving up 43% loss since the beginning of this week. The volume distribution has been extremely aggressive, indicating that this company is at serious risk of complete failure. Fundamentally, the company has been bleeding cash and is recording some deficits which means that this is definitely not a buying opportunity despite the extreme loss in valuation. Finally, let's move over to precious metals. Gold closed at 1,386 in what has been quite the frustrating week for the yellow metal, with much of the trading range occurring within a tight 1% window. Overall, volume is considerably weak with much of the institutional players moving towards the yen as a safe haven asset as opposed to the precious metals. Silver is bearishly stable as the price never exceeded $22 per troy ounce following last Friday's huge sell-off. On the positive side though, silver bulls can be comforted by the fact that silver never followed through on Friday's losses and appears to have found some support at current levels. Finally, we saw some significant volatility in palladium, a bit different than what we've been discussing about palladium the last couple weeks, which was down against the prior session. Despite a rather large sell-off, particularly based on volatility in Asia, Palladium is still trading above its 50 and 200 day moving averages, so it's not too bad. The bullish nature of its technical trend is very much intact. Important to note that Palladium could drop to $700 and still be considered bullish long term. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining us for another Weekly Market Wrap-Up. You're all caught up as far as the markets go. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. 
And don't forget to email me at info at viralnetworknews.com. For VNN, I'm Hannah Bernard.